Hey there, I'm Scott, and this is Tangents. Well, it is the end of the year. It is 1548 as I record this on December 31st, 2021. Uh, Betty White died today, 99. Very kind of disappointing and depressing, although I guess 99 is a good run. Um, yeah, 2022 is coming up. It's uh, crazy that we're still in the middle of a raging pandemic, uh, especially given that, you know, like just basic, obvious public health measures could have ended this e even before. This is the thing that drives me nuts. Even before we had the vaccines, isolating everybody for like six weeks uh, with masks and all this kind of stuff and just staying at home paying people, of course, to do that, putting all of the loans and mortgages and all of that kind of stuff on pause. Could have been done. We have the power. It's, you know, all that shit is imaginary anyway. So uh, you could just do a little tweaking in the banks, uh, freeze interest, all of this kind of stuff. Would have had no effect, really. Worst case scenario, just paused the economy for a month and a half. Um, never did that. Obviously, yeah. I mean, you do that and then institute a program of testing with tracing, you know, contact tracing, which we can all do now with our phones easily. Uh, you can see if people have been in proximity of somebody who tests positive. Uh, very easy to do, not technically sophisticated at all. Could have done that. The stuff is built. It's not like even... It's not like we would have had to do some novel technology for it. It exists in our phones and uh, not used for the most part. Some individual states and countries have contact tracing programs, but it's not built into the operating systems because, I don't know, people are dumb. I understand people have like imaginary privacy concerns, but you're walking around with a tracking device. I mean, to be bothered by it, doing stuff that's actually good and useful and anonymous um, is dumb when you're, you know, if you're really bothered by it, just don't have a fucking phone. Anyway, never mind that now. Didn't do that. Um, do that. And then if you were positive or exposed to somebody positive, uh, the obvious thing to do would have been, you know, isolate and pay people to isolate, make sure that they're protected from being fired while they're isolating until they have a negative test, or probably two to be safe. Probably do that with RT-PCR just because it's much more sensitive than the antigen tests. And of course, I, I just had an RT-PCR test today, incidentally. Negative, thank you very much. But uh, mine was a rapid test that cost me 200 bucks. Probably also my insurance company or some federal subsidy, I don't know what the actual charge was for it. But PCR is such a, uh, so, I mean, it's very clever. Although the guy who got the Nobel prize for it is fucking off his rocker. Uh, but it is very clever, very simple. Once you know how to do it, very obvious. The reagents for it are things, they're proteins, they're enzymes that could be very easily mass produced by fermentation. And they are. Um, and purified with, we have all kinds of genetic tools now to add in little tags and things to extract specific proteins from a fermentation. So the reagents end up having a cost that goes to zero. The thermocycler that is required for that, uh, basically just something that, you know, heats up to a temperature where the enzymes work and then heats up, you know, lets them work heats up past that to detach the double-stranded, you know, either DNA, RNA, or DSDNA into single strands, and then cools back down to do another uh, polymerase cycle. Um, that's simple technology. It's literally just like a PID controller and, you know, a resistive heater or something. Um, there's nothing special or magical about it. It's something that, you know, any first year electronics person could probably figure out and build with an Arduino or something. Obviously you need to have it you know, tested and verified, but all of those are fixed costs. And this is a thing where you could do it, develop it, 
open source it, uh, get it FDA approved, and then uh, you know, the cost per unit could go down really basically to zero. I mean, almost nothing. Hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars, probably more realistically. And then the sensors, you could use a spectrophotometer, like LEDs and some light sensors. Again, you have to test it and validate it uh, and do some, you know, you have to do some tests to make sure everything is okay, but you could build all this stuff for stupidly, stupidly cheap. You could get all the reagents stupidly cheap. The um, primers that you use, uh, you could also make very cheaply. We have like DNA printers now that will make uh, specific oleo like specific sequences of DNA um, and it's really cheap really fast really easy it's it's just dumb it's dumb. the fact that we don't have this in a way that is just pennies per test maybe dollars per test is ridiculous and we also don't have something that is um, able to be done quickly and cheaply I mean we do have it I guess but hundreds of dollars, not essentially free. The fact that we don't have nationalized testing. I mean, this is a thing, it, it, it's just so fucking dumb. Like, and again, this is all before the vaccine. Uh, it should just exist, it should just be done. And the thing about that is it works for pretty much any pathogen, as long, other than a prion. Uh, if it's got DNA or RNA in it, PCR or RT-PCR will detect it. Um, so we don't have that. It should just be like basic infrastructure that exists and is ready to go uh, for regular testing. And it should be set up so that it's easy and fast for anybody to get tested for not just this, but anything else coming down the road. Don't do that. Um, and then, you know, again, the isolation, pay people to isolate, pause their expenses, pause their work. Uh, we didn't do that. Do all that stuff, even without vaccines that are safe and effective, which we now have, many of now, even without those, you could essentially have stopped the pandemic. In fact, today, even with record case numbers, you could slam the brakes on that and get us down to essentially zero cases. Uh, now, granted, to do it globally requires global will and coordination. But we do have the WHO and the UN. And uh, the reason that we're not doing it for the most part, other than, you know, like maybe there would be some weird rogue countries that wouldn't do it. But other than that, the, the only reason that we're not doing this and that we haven't done this, I would say comes down to countries like the United States and the EU being in bed with companies that make, you know, they've, they've minted so many billionaires out of these vaccines and, yeah, you know, I mean, the vaccines are great, but we have giant chunks of the world that don't have access to them. And, uh, you yeah, know, we're basically fucking ourselves with that. So it's, an, it's annoying. It's just depressing and annoying. Because we could be, like, where I live, anywhere you go, people are just unmasked. You know, it's like, it pretty much like, there's no pandemic going on. It's like a Twilight Zone episode. Um, it almost makes you feel crazy if you're like me because you're like, I, I know. Now, granted, in Arizona, it's not as bad as, say, California or New York right now. Um, and we're doing relatively well compared to the nation, sh shockingly. But, you know, you look at the case numbers and by any reasonable metric, you should have something where it's like, okay, if the cases go above this number, um, we should be in this kind of lockdown or we should do this. And it should just be an objective measure that triggers a natural response. And then, yeah. And then maybe you tweak those numbers based on changes in the R0, changes in how communicable the disease is. Uh, but that kind of stuff is stuff that is solved academically by epidemiologists, you know, long time ago. It's not, it's not new stuff. It's not stuff that we have to work on or figure out. It's just there. Uh, we didn't do any of that shit. And instead, we've just got this thing raging, uh, basically unchecked. And, you know, I mean, who? I'm not trying to lay blame for this necessarily, although I do think Biden, the CDC, Trump, uh, so many people 
are to blame. You can't really, I mean, the one thing about this is it's not like, oh, it's all X's fault. You know, the CDC telling people not to wear masks early on uh, for a respiratory disease that probably just based on its etiology, just based on how it presents itself, how it looks, and uh, all of this, you probably could have guessed, probably airborne. Um, could have guessed it. And just to be cautious, until it's proven otherwise, mask the fuck up. Uh, we have the ability to, you know, we, we actually have the uh, Defense Production Act, which should give us the ability to command industries to mass produce stuff and to steer production in certain directions. We should have so many masks that everybody, and not just masks, but like high quality N95 masks um, that people are getting just mailed to them. We have a post office. And everybody should just be getting these, and it should just be understood that while the case numbers in a region are above something, you just wear them. And it's not a big deal. You don't have to make a fucking hassle out of it. It's just like, okay, we're protecting each other by doing this. And also by complying temporarily, then we're making this end faster. That should just be, it should just be simple and obvious. Uh, and that includes for people who have been vaccinated and like me boosted because, you know, the vaccines are good, they work well, but they're not perfect. You know, it's this Swiss cheese defense model. Uh, the vaccines are one layer of Swiss cheese. Uh, you shoot some arrows at me, some of them are going to hit the cheese and some of them are going to, well, imagine that the cheese is stopping the arrows and not just blowing through it. Some of them are going to get through. So you put another layer, which is the mask. And now you have to have two holes lining up. You put another layer, which is distance. Not putting yourself in stupid situations where you're in a close, closed environment with a lot of people. Um, one thing that I do see here also, yeah, it just annoys the shit out of me, but um, the, these, these, these viruses are contained in aerosols that are in particles that are not as small as smoke, to be fair, but not that much bigger. And uh, if you're walking, like I, I always think, I think about ASU campus before they made it a smoke-free campus. There'd be someone literally 50 to 100 meters ahead of me, um, smoking on a slightly breezy day, and I would still smell the smoke, right? Um, if you could smell the smoke, now again, we're talking slightly bigger particulates, slightly bigger aerosols, which means they're not gonna drift as far, they're not gonna stay in the air as long, all of this kind of stuff, but still gives you an idea that stuff lingers. And the thing about a virus is it doesn't matter. I mean, granted, if you're exposed to a shit ton of them, then that will probably make things worse for you. If you're exposed to one or two, then you have to go through some reproductive cycles before you get there. But all it takes is one infectious unit to get to you, land in the right place, and it can make you sick. And uh, yeah, unlike smoke, where the smoke is just diffusing and it's not reproducing in you. So if you can smell smoke, this is my general thought and rule here, but if you can smell smoke, uh, like if somebody was smoking and you could tell they were smoking, you would probably imagine that you're being exposed to virus from that person. Um, we don't, and, and people act like, you know, somehow six feet is this magical, like, oh, it's gonna get six feet and then it's just gonna precipitate out of the air and that's it. Um, no, this is, if they were much larger particles, it's not bad, but really no. Being outside doesn't protect you fully at all, especially if you're in a crowded space, but being inside in close proximity, um, it's just dumb. It's just, and not necessary. Now, I understand I'm a person who is less social than a lot of people. So it's not as big of a deal to me not to go to like parties and things, but just fucking suck it up for a little while. And again, the thing that gets me is if we would have fucking done proper isolation and we had testing, tracing, and isolating in progress, um, we would be basically back to normal and we could have been back to normal a fucking year ago. We could have been back to normal uh, before Trump was out of office. 
And so many people have fucked this thing so much. Yeah. CDC first said no masks, then they said masks, and then they said no masks if you're vaccinated, which is, again, dumb uh, for the Swiss cheese reason. Uh, you have President Biden's wife telling people, oh, isn't, doesn't the air just smell better without, smell sweeter without a mask? It's like, you know, fuck you, Jill. No, don't tell, like, it, it, it's, it's infuriating. Like, Trump, at least, I don't expect anything from. When you have the Bidens, it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. You know, do better, be better. And then you have the CEO of Delta kind of insisting that, well, if somebody is vaccinated and they recover, um, we should really take that isolation requirement down from 10 days to five days. Um, and no, thank you. And again, also, if you're isolating, isolation shouldn't stop until you get a negative PCR test. I think that is how it should be. If you want to do just a negative like antigen test, okay, but PCR, much more definitive. Uh, much more sensitive to low numbers. So negative PCR test, you're no longer infectious. Okay, now you can go back into the world. But that's not in the CDC guidance. Uh, the CDC now is basically, as far as I can tell, being run by the Delta CEO, who has no qualifications in terms of medicine at all. No epidemiology, no virology. He just wants money and just wants people to work. And... Uh, you know, so he's like, ah, fuck it. We're just going to say, well, if, you, if you're vaccinated and you have a breakthrough infection, then in five days, um, you can just go back to work. Fuck it. Um, and no, this is dumb. And also, I mean, I, like, I look at this and it's like, when Trump was in office, he was getting agencies like the CDC to do his bidding. And that was bad. That was horrible. But at least when Biden came back, you kind of think, okay, now we're going to have something where we can recover uh, some level of credibility for these, these agencies. And instead, Biden has pushed the same stuff. Now, I don't know if Trump just like distort, like he got in the sweater and he's so bulky that it just stretched everything and it never recovered. Or if Biden's just pushing it too. I don't give a shit which one happened. Whatever it is, whatever the reason... Um, the CDC, essentially, in my mind, has lost all credibility, uh, which is not a good place to be because they kind of have an important role in the world, I would say. Ah, but anyway, so you got that. Um, we have these fucking anti-vaxxer assholes. A lot, of, a lot of people, too, who are making tons of money by air quotes contrarian views on vaccines and, you know, like, telling people to take therapeutics that are not actually effective, not tested, not... And in fact, it's not just that they're not proven to be safe and effective, it's that they are proven not to be effective up to, you know, whatever whatever sort of confidence interval, you know, very high confidence. So it's basically like, if they help at all, they're within the noise floor, and probably not even that. Because uh, you can't prove a negative. But you can definitely say probably, probably, probably not. Anyway, I don't want to just bitch about that, but it's it's just frustrating to me. It's so, so goddamn dumb. Because we could, again, could be back to normal. And instead of actually going through that little bit of work that it would have taken to get back to normal, uh, we rushed to get back to normal. And now we've got record numbers of cases. And people are just being stupid assholes. And... As far as I can tell, like the, the only way this will not go on indefinitely is just if it gets to the point where it burns itself out. Which is possible, but it's the stupidest possible approach to a pandemic. It's like, uh, yeah, if you were living in medieval Europe and you didn't even know what viruses were, much less have the public health measures that we do, maybe then, you know, it makes sense, but uh, the the stuff that we're doing now in the modern world is just dumb. So anyway, there's all of that. Um, yesterday, I watched Don't Look Up. It's David Sirota's movie on um, thinly veiled metaphor of a comet. Um, I think it was like a nine kilometer in diameter comet coming to impact Earth. 
and sort of how that goes. Um, I don't know that I would recommend this movie. Uh, it, I, I'm not saying it's not a good movie. It's, it's a good movie. And for most people, maybe it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt you as much as it hurt me, but for me, I mean, it, it has, he's mainly talking about global warming, just to take the, although it's not just global warming, it's also the pandemic and other things. But in particular, like global warming is this imminent threat. You know, the, the ongoing climate catastrophe is a thing that is happening now. It is a thing that, I, I mean, it could not be clearer. In my lifetime, uh, the change in climate has been palpable, it is remarkably big. And by any, again, just like the fucking virus, by any reasonable measure, if you look at like when the first snowfall is, or the global average temperatures, or CO2 PPMs, or anything, anything that's a direct measure or indirect measure of the state of the climate, um, severity and frequency of summer storms, whatever you want, firestorm frequency, uh, it's just obviously a massive problem, not looming ahead of us, but present now. Obviously, it's going to get a lot worse, but uh, we're not doing anything about it. And again, you know, Trump not doing anything about it, you kind of get. Joe not doing anything about it is not, I don't want to say that I'm surprised at all. I voted for the motherfucker because I wanted Trump out. Uh, but I was under no delusion that Biden is particularly great. Um, but it's still disappointing. It's like, dude, you have grandkids. You have, like, don't you give a shit about other people at all? Um, don't you feel any kind of need to be a steward of this planet, this, you know, lovely little blue and green ball that we all inhabit and depend on? Um, don't, don't you feel any kind of fucking responsibility? Um, yeah, I mean, the thing that's annoying about it is like, there are so many people like Joe who have the power to do something about this shit and they fucking won't. They won't, like... I can just bitch about it for the most part. I can maybe call my Congress people and, you know, go schedule a meeting. If I really wanted to, I could maybe donate some money to Kirsten Cinema and bribe her to do something because that's the only thing that, that seems to move the needle for her. Um, or negative attention. She seems to love that. But other than that, I, I have no power, right? I can't do anything. Fucking President of the United States sure as fuck can do something. Uh, the Democrats running Congress sure as fuck can do something. Uh, similarly, also on a smaller scale, I mean, we have Republicans all across the country uh, doing things like passing legislation to uh, curtail voting rights or allow, I mean, in the best, the best ones, uh, you know, it's not just like, uh, oh, we're gerrymandering the fuck out of things. We're actually like changing things so that hey, if we don't like the election results, we don't have to certify them. You know, little things like that, that, you know, no big deal. Not big deal. And then the Democrats have, I mean, we do have some bills that are, air quotes, protecting voting rights, uh, but none of them, none of the ones currently in existence, as far as I'm aware, actually address even more than a small fraction of what the Republicans are doing. And even those, even those are not getting passed. Like they've gotten past the House maybe, and they're not getting, they're not going to pass the Senate. Um, so this is just like, what the fuck? And you sit there and you're like, you know, you, you fucking people. I, and I think the answer here is like, I, I want to say like, obviously your jobs depend on you passing this shit, because if you don't do it, um, the Democrats are going to be permanent minor minority status and not be able to actually get control of the fucking house and Senate again, or potentially the presidency, at least for you know, many years. And the fact that they're not like, looking at that and urgently doing something about it, either they're stupid, they don't know, they're out of touch, or I suspect and fear, um, they actually don't mind. I, I really think they probably almost arguably like it. Uh, in the sense that, you know, you have, um, when, when Trump was in office, they could send emails out about Trump and people would donate money. They could uh, get people riled up against uh, Trump and against Paul Ryan and all of these people. And it's much easier 
to be in that position than to actually be the person in power. Uh, because if you're in power and you're not doing something, then it raises some questions. But if you're not in power and you're not doing something, um, it's like, oh, I, I would really love to help, but I can't. Um, this is more like somebody who actually could totally help, you know, and they're just sitting there watching somebody getting robbed. <laughs> they're, they're watching some old lady get robbed by some little kid who's not even that strong and completely unarmed. And they're six foot three and completely muscle bound. And they're just standing there. Oh no, I wish if, if only I could help. And then they walk away. It's uh, kind of where we are. Um, so anyway, that's, that's another sort of fucking thing. Um, I went snowboarding yesterday or two days ago. It was two days ago. Time is weird. Was it yesterday? I don't even remember what day it was. Time, time is just, you know, it's a blur to me. Uh, must have been two, two days ago, I think, maybe. Yes, it was Wednesday. Okay, uh, did that, went to Snow Bowl. Probably, it would have been actually fine for the pandemic, and this is the reason that I got my rapid PCR test. Um, going up the mountain, basically staying outside and staying away from people, easy enough, but... And this was kind of stupid. The, um, we got there and there was a sign that said that all the parking lots are full. So we parked in the lot down below. I was a little bit nervous about taking my car up. Although my car is a Model 3 uh, with all-wheel drive. I've taken my Prius up there back when I had it, which only had two-wheel drive. And I had no problem. I parked up there and went uh, snowboarding with that. I'm sure I could have done the three. I... I Regret not doing that, but I parked at the bottom. We ended up having to wait like 45 minutes to an hour to get a bus to go up. The bus up was bad, but it wasn't that bad. Uh, went snowboarding, um, hyperextended my pinky, which was a little bit of fun. Uh, it was actually fine while I was up on the mountain, but uh, started getting kind of swollen. And I'm sure you, I'm sure it doesn't come across in the video, but uh, it's not only swollen, but it's uh, it's a little bit black and blue, um, but overall, I think fine. I think it will recover. Uh, but then when we came down, we had to again wait 45 minutes, uh, but we got on a bus that was a little overcrowded, you know, half, totally filled. And then everybody, you know, like the remaining space was packed with people like me who were standing. And there was a, well, shockingly actually for Arizona, most people on the bus were masked up. Um, dude in front of me standing was not. So, yeah, that's great. And then uh, my business partner was at the back of the bus and uh, there was a family behind him sitting down in that sort of bench seat facing forward at the back of the bus complaining about uh, headaches and kind of upper respiratory stuff. And then uh, I guess one of them, I, I didn't hear this, but he was saying one of them said, um, you yeah, know, not everything is, uh, is COVID. Which is true, but unless you've tested negative, I would say during a pandemic, you kind of just presumptively, you know, it's not a presumptive diagnosis, but you kind of think, okay, you got some symptoms or you're, you know, um, maybe just don't go in public. Uh, maybe take the, maybe don't go on your little fun vacation. Maybe just like protect other people and not be an asshole. Um, luckily they seemed, they were wearing masks and luckily uh, I'm negative. I, my business partner is probably negative. Um, so we'll see, but you know, it, it just, it irritates me because it's like, just fucking care about other people. I don't, I don't know how you can convince people to care about other people, but anyway, um, this, this pandemic, I, I would love to be able to not obsess so much about the fucking pandemic. I, I'd similarly love to be able to not obsess so much about politics and all these other things. Um, and yet it's just hard. It's hard because these are pressing things. I feel like uh, in the in the movie, Don't Look Up, Leonardo DiCaprio and um, name is totally escaping me. God, that's terrible. A uh, woman who's playing a um, astrophysics PhD student who discovers the, the comet. Um, God, that's going to kill me. It is, um, I, I, I can see her face. 
it's like almost there. It's not coming to me. But anyway, these two are like sitting there and people are, they're telling people what's going on and nobody's either nobody's believing them or nobody's like really caring, which is again, the feeling that you get with the, the climate catastrophe and with the pandemic. And, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, you just feel like your hair's on fire and yet nothing you can do, no approach that I've ever found. I've tried so many different things. Nothing I've ever found has done anything as far as I can tell to really move the needle with people. Um, and so they're like sitting there like screaming basically like, you know, this is a fucking thing we got to take care of right now. And the president who seems modeled a little bit after little Sarah Palin, little Kirsten Cinema, in there. Uh, she sits there and is like, you know, yeah, this is not a big deal. We're, we're not too concerned. And then they basically just decide not to do anything about it. And then they get, then they decide to do something about it, but then kind of like fuck it up. And it's just so, and corporate interests get involved. And it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. Is it a good movie or not? It's a movie, I would say, that captures the moment to some extent. Um, I don't know that that makes it a good movie, but it's it's definitely not a movie I ever need to see again. And had I not watched it, I don't think I would have missed anything. Uh, but it, it also didn't really surprise me what it was or what it was about when I watched it. And it does have the syndrome that every modern movie has that it's like two and a half hours or so, and it does not need to be. I, I keep thinking about this. Um, you know, Jaws is over two hours long and Jaws is not a fast paced movie. There are big lulls in Jaws, but the thing about Jaws and, and obviously like storytelling has evolved since then, all of this now modern movies will be two and a half hours and shit is happening like pretty much for the whole thing. I mean, this one did have some excruciating, boring stuff happening too, just to kind of prove a point, but. Most modern movies, there's stuff going on. You, know, you watch any of the Marvel movies, it's like fucking two and a half hours long of just action. And somehow it feels like nothing to me. Because it's like, um, I don't know, if there's no, if there's no zero, if, if there's no moment of silence, it doesn't punctuate the noise, right? It's just the noise at a certain point. Um, the cacophony just kind of fades into the background. That's what I feel about most of these it's modern movies. Jaws, again, you know, it has these lulls, but I'm thinking about it. I'm sure you could edit any movie and take a little bit of time out. I don't think you could take very much out of Jaws without, like, losing something. Whereas most of these modern movies, uh, you could take a lot out, and you wouldn't really miss that much. It, it doesn't really advance the plot. It doesn't really serve a purpose. It's just extra filler. And it's annoying because I would much rather watch, if I'm watching a movie that's mostly filler or, you know, like just a popcorn movie, make it an hour and a half, you know, let me get through it and then just be done. I don't want to be sitting there squirming in my seat. Uh, it's like when I used to take classes in undergrad, especially, there were the classes that were three days a week, which I used to love because it was 50 minute class. By the end of the class, I was kind of ready to be done. Um, but it was like the, the right unit. And then there were the classes that were two days a week, which annoyingly is what the university is really pushing much more for now. Those classes would be like an hour, 10 minutes. And somehow between the 50 minutes and the 70 minutes, that extra 20 minutes, I would go from satiated and comfortable to, you know, like a 50 minute class, I'm like ready to go at the end, but I don't feel like freaking out in my seat. The 70 minute class, I'd be like, or 75 minutes, I think they are, um, hour 15. Those classes, by the end of it, like the last 10 minutes, I'm just like losing my fucking mind. And you know, there's no, there's no professor who's interesting enough to carry me through that class consistently. That maybe one or two lectures of the semester are good, but for the most part, that's just too long for me to be sitting in one place. The same with these movies, like, and there are movies you know, um, trying to think of uh, Dances with Wolves. It's like a three hour movie before the director's cuts. And it has lulls and stuff, but that movie, I didn't feel that like 
antsiness so much. And I was younger then too. Now, most of these movies, you know, I get like hour and a half, hour 45 in, and I'm ready to be done. And the rest of it, I'm just like you know, itching in my seat trying to get out. Um, and even when I enjoy them, it's not just that it's a shitty movie. It's like even a good movie now, most of them just, they're not moving enough. They're not, they don't have enough of something. I don't know what it is. It's definitely not action because they'll be active for the whole thing. They just don't really satiate me. They don't hold my interest in the way that, uh, that I need. And I, again, weirdly, I mean, I think Jaws is like two hours, 10 minutes. I could be wrong about that, but I'm just pulling a number out of my ass. So it's not like two and a half hours, but still most modern movies, if they were two hours and 10 minutes, I'd be the last 30, 40 minutes of that ready to go. Um, Jaws, I've watched it. I think I watched it within the last year and I enjoy it. I don't mind the slowness of it. I don't mind the length of it too much. And I also don't feel like there's any part where it's like, you could really just have cut this part out or, you know, at least trimmed it. Um, I don't feel that. I just, it kind of feels right. Um, not to hold Jaws up as like the most amazing, best movie ever. It's not, it's certainly not, but it's, it's interesting to me. Ah, <sighs> man. So we've got that. What else do we have? Um, snowboarding was fun. I haven't gone in a few years. I missed it. Uh, the snow was really nice, actually really pretty fucking awesome. Um, the only thing I didn't like about that trip really was just the waiting and then being in the sort of close proximity to people in the bus, especially on the way down. Um, but that's a long bus ride too. I, if I go again, I totally would not take the bus. I just go up, even if it says parking lots full, go up and see if I can find a spot because probably could have found a spot. So what else do we have? Um, just trying to think. I, I don't, I'm not really a big new year's person. Like I don't do resolutions. I never have. Um, I like, I, I do like traditions and things like that, but I don't really have the feeling of a new year's Eve. It doesn't mean too much to me. Um, I do like occasionally like watching when Harry met Sally or something once every four or five years. I don't mind that. But other than that, I'm not for new year's independent of the pandemic. I normally wouldn't even go out. Not a, yeah. When I was in grad school, I would go out to parties. Um, I don't even know why I used to, and I, I didn't like it then either. Um, it was probably more, if I'm being honest, like, you know, you're kind of, you're hoping to meet somebody or maybe there's somebody that you like that you want to see there. And so that would drive me to go. But the actual act of being at the party, I, I wouldn't, don't get me wrong. I'd enjoy some of it. It wasn't like it was torture, but for the most part it was like, eh. Um, and now I just am not driven. I don't feel that pressure anymore to try that kind of given up in a certain way. I, I don't know if that's true, but you know, I, I just don't feel that drive. <sighs> what else do we have? So we got the pandemic, we got politics. Oh, 2022 is ramping up. That's seems like it's going to be a clusterfuck. 2024 right around the corner. Um, yeah, I, I just, it's just, oh, I'm so fucking tired of that shit. And, and I know, I, I say this and it sounds like I'm saying it in jest, but I really mean it. It was painful for me to, 2016, I didn't want Trump to win. Thought he could win. And so I, I called and I canvassed pretty much every week from like August through November um, for Hillary. And then I voted for her. And I didn't mind voting for her that much. It wasn't my first choice. I didn't like it, but it was like, okay. And then 2020, it was like Bernie came out and then um, yeah, I did not call or canvas for Biden. Uh, I had no real interest in that. I did vote for him in the end um, just because I didn't want Trump to win again. And I'm just like, it's so fucking excruciating for me to have him there. Um, you know, I've, I, I would not be the person, if, if there's a terrorist who has a gun to a kid's head and uh, you're like, okay, you, got, you can't give in to the demands because then they'll just ask for more. I'm not the guy who's going to say, just put the bullet in the kid. I'm, I'm 
you know, okay, 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 I'll do whatever the fuck you want. That's more me. So I did vote for Biden. Um, I, I really, at present, barring some major change, I don't see that changing in 2024. I think it's going to be somebody horrible also. Uh, Biden, or even maybe worse, I don't know. Whoever it is, I don't want to vote for them. And I know whoever is voting or whoever's running against them is going to be so bad that if I feel, if I'm a citizen, I'm going to feel compelled, just honor bound and duty bound to do it. For that reason, I'm really seriously thinking about trying to immigrate someplace and renounce my citizenship because I do not want to be in that position again. At the very least, I'd have to be someplace like California where it's like, okay, I don't have to do I don't have to do it. Arizona was like on the teetering, you know, tipping point a little bit. So really felt compelled. If I was in California or New York, I could have just written in a picture of a dick instead of you know, voting for Joe and I wouldn't feel so bad. Here, I would have felt bad about it. Although this time I did not... The 2016, I gave people a lot of shit for not voting for Hillary because Trump won, which was horrible. This year, I didn't... Or 2020, rather didn't really give people much shit for not voting for Biden, even in states like Arizona, because he sucks. He's so fucking bad. And also, you know, like, I, I really do think part of the reason that we got Trump is endlessly voting for these shitty candidates like Biden. Um, and actually going back all the way to Clinton, at least. Um, Bill, not Hillary. And, you know, like, just basically... I mean, he was charismatic, I'll give you that. Um, but in the sense of like a kind of jovial, jovial alcoholic, not really in the sense of somebody who you want running the country. Um, and, and you just, you know, you have these people who are like, oh, they're not really going to do the right things. They're not, um, you know, but kind of have to do it because the, alter the alternative is worse. And you keep doing that and then it just ratchets worse and worse every cycle. And yeah, I, I just, I'm done with it. I don't want to participate in the fucking game anymore. But I also, I do know, like if I was there and I had the ability to, you know, that the terrorist is going to shoot the kid. I'm, I want, I'm going to feel compelled to do something. Um, so not being in the position where I can even give into their demands is kind of the best option I can think of right now. It's, re it's, it's really sad and annoying. I mean, not that I'm, I don't know, I, uh, I'm not proud to be an American. I'm not really fond of a lot of things about this country. Uh, it's depressing how, I, I did at one point buy into a lot of the bullshit. And uh, one of the things actually that appealed to me about Joe Biden years ago, when I first saw him uh, on C-SPAN was, he was in the Senate at the time, and he's doing a hearing with Ashcroft and he's sitting there like, the reason that we have these treaties is so that if my son, if he gets captured, he doesn't get tortured. And I saw that and I was like, yeah, it, it actually compelled me. I, I liked it. I felt good about it. Now I feel like it was just like a selfish kind of grandstanding thing. I, I really have lost any potential respect for the dude. Um, but... I don't want to do it again. I, 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 I'm so tired of voting for terrible people. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not going to vote for um, cinema again. I don't care if the fucking devil is running against cinema. I'm not going to vote for her. I, you know, she gets in the, she wins the primary and I'm in the state and I can vote. I'm not going to do it. I cannot do it anymore. And similarly, if it was Joe or if it was Rat Boy, um, Buttigieg, or if it was um, was Kamala, even even Warren, honestly, like I I kind of bought into some of Warren's bullshit and that first debate where she and Bernie were kind of tag teaming the rest of the um, the first couple of debates, kind of tag teaming the the air quotes moderates. I loved that. Really clicked with me, and then um, yeah, she completely disappointed me, and I. I should have known better because of the whole, um, you know, the 164th uh, Native American and, you know, like, identifying as that in uh, applications and on things. It's like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty fucked up. Uh, this is not 
really the thing, I mean, also the capitalist to my bones and Republic, formerly Republican becoming a Democrat, all this stuff. You look at that and you're like, eh, yeah, I should have known better, but now I do. Wouldn't vote for her. Um, Hillary seems like, yeah, I know it's fucking crazy. If I, I, I watched this video of her several weeks to a month ago, and it was her telling this, I probably talked about this already, but it was a video of her, you know, like talking about this, it was basically her acceptance speech if she won in 2016. And she's talking about seeing her mom on a bench and, you know, like all this stuff. And she's kind of crying, brought to tears. And up to the brought to tears, I didn't feel bad. And then she starts going off on this crazy tangent where she's like, your daughter, basically, the, the, I'm not even going to try to paraphrase it. But basically, she was saying um, that she was destined to be president. She was going to be president. She had, you know, like it was a fait accompli. It wasn't even a matter of like maybe or like she had a chance to do it. She was going to do it. And it just struck me as so hubristic and delusional that I just, you know, I mean, I, it would not surprise me if she tried to run again. Um, even though she did, I believe, say that she was not going to. Uh, but people say stuff and then they change their minds all the time. I, Bernie's like the only guy that I would vote for right now. Uh, if AOC did it, I would vote for her, although I'm not hyper thrilled with her. And there are a lot of people, you know, I don't know how she would do. Um, yeah, but Bernie, I would do. That's about it. I don't know if there's anyone else on the national stage who I would want to vote for. Maybe there's somebody new who I've not seen yet. Nina Turner, if she was doing it, I would vote for her. But uh, she has like the same people who loathe Bernie, loathe her. For, and again, for both, for no reason. It's like, go. Oh, it's just like demented. It's you see the response that people have to these two people, and it's just like, holy, like what the fuck is wrong with you? They hate them in, like I would say more than people hate Trump, and Trump at least has earned, you know. And I, I wouldn't even say that I hate Trump. I personally, you know, hate is a really something that takes a lot of energy. I'm not that inclined, but. I, I don't like him. I can't stand him. I don't think he is at all honorable or decent or worthy of anything. And uh, he's an awful person. Uh, and he certainly should not ever be in a position of power. He should probably be, you know, facing criminal charges and convicted. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm a prison or prison abolitionist. Could not put that word together in my mouth for some reason but I'm a, I'm a prison abolitionist I don't believe in incarcerating people but given the system that we have you know honestly like he basically deserves in my opinion to be put into prison for the rest of his life which could easily be 20 years given how long Fred lasted um, and then you think like you know 20 years and, and that's assuming uh, there's no life extension technology or anything like this this is a scares the shit out of me but we talked about that I know this is well-trodden land. I'm sorry. Can't help it. Ah, so what else? Um, I don't know. I, I don't have any particular... There's nothing that I'm like super optimistic about or looking forward to next year. Um, just kind of tired and dredging through. Really hoping to move things in a more positive direction personally and professionally. But uh, I mean, it, it, to be fair... Things are moving, you know, slowly. It, it is a thing. Like, you look, even though they feel slow at the time, you, know, you look back a year, several years, I'm in a better position. But it's still just, you know, it, at some point, it's just like, I'm, I just need a fucking break. I, I really, I don't know, I just want a fucking vacation. I, I have not taken what I would consider to be a proper vacation in quite some time. The last time I even, before the pandemic, went to Europe and was there for like two weeks. I, I would normally on my own just not want to go for more, any less than three or four weeks just because it's such a long trip back and forth that uh, my partner couldn't uh, couldn't get time off of work, which they ended up getting let go from. In the video. But never mind. That there. Um, couldn't do it. And 
so for that time, it would have been a vacation, but there was this issue with a customer and on this customer, we were taking care of the hardware design and this other dude was taking care of the software, the firmware that went on the hardware. And there was a problem with the hardware that was bricking. It was like the people had the stuff out in the field and then it was like locking up. Um, turned out, incidentally, you know, spoiler, it was the firmware. It had nothing to do with anything that we did. It was all the firmware guy. Uh, but, you know, with some, if something's not working and it has hardware and firmware, people feel like it's the hardware. So it's kind of a dumb place to be, not controlling the firmware, because if you don't, then, um, you know, somebody else is responsible for stuff. And if it works, then you don't get that much credit. And if it doesn't work, then you get the blame. So anyway, we had this and then the customer was insisting that we have daily meetings that would last a couple hours every fucking day. And so I'm like in London and Paris and, you know, traveling around Europe a little bit and on these fucking long ass calls, walking through me, walking through museums, I was in like the Tate Modern and uh, just standing outside on this fucking call. And I've been there several times, so it's not like I missed something, but it was just frustrating and it's like, that was my last like vacation of any length. And then since then I've not, yeah, I have weekends, although I still kind of work on the weekends, but I need really like, I, I really just want like a month or a month, it, given my druthers, I would take fucking six weeks, just decompress and really, you know, like wipe all of this shit out of my, out of my mind and then start afresh on something new and interesting and less frustrating. Um, Maybe someday I was, I, six months ago, I thought I was going to have that right now, but obviously not. Anyway, um, man. And we had another customer that, um, this year they're showing some stuff at CES. CES, they schedule for the beginning of January, which means that any company that's going to show there or people that are contracting like us, the build and shit for people who are going to show there end up having a very busy end of December. And again, I, like, I, don't, I, don't celebrate, I don't celebrate New Year's. I don't really celebrate uh, Christmas at all. It's not like I need those days off, but it's just like, I need a break, you know? I need some time where I could actually take time off and just, just chill out a little bit, just relax, yeah? But anyway, with that, um, I'm going to wrap up now. I, I could keep going for another half hour uh, until I have to leave, but I think that's enough for now. We'll see how the new year goes. Um, flying uh, next weekend, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. I'm flying either to Sedona uh, with my romantic partner and business partner or flying to Bisbee. Uh, we'll see how that goes. A little nervous about that one because at the south, well, f first off, it's like eight kilometers to the actual, between Bisbee and the Bisbee airport. So you have a problem there. Um, doesn't sound like fun. It's a, it's a big problem actually with general aviation because you end up at an airport that's like in the middle of nowhere and then you have to get around somehow. So however fast it is to get there, uh, you now have a, another, you know, you have to probably like take a lift or something because there's no train and there's no, probably no bus or anything. That's, yeah independent of the pandemic, annoying. With the pandemic, it's even worse. Uh, so probably I'm, I'm leaning towards Sedona, um, depending on, it, but basically it'll be depending on the weather. Weather right now looks okay, but you, know, you never know, a week out. Um, but the other thing is like the Bisbee airport is, I think it's two nautical miles from the border. And uh, I really don't want to test accidentally, like getting over the border. <laughs> Uh, with Mexico not when I'm flying. So uh, a little nervous about that, honestly. We'll see. I'll have to, I'll probably practice that in the flight simulator before we do it. But with that, thank you as always. I hope you have a happy new year. I hope I do too. I really hope I will be able to get a vacation this year. I would like that. Um, and I also kind of would like to find a path to not being here in... Um, in the US in the next like couple of years because 
I don't want, I, I don't want to, I don't want to vote for fucking Biden again or worse. And, um, yeah, I want to be, I also, I would love to be in a country, you know, I mean, I would just love to be in a country where they have a healthcare system that isn't a piece of shit. You know, I'd like to be in a country that has mass transit, that has, you know, subways, that is, I'd love to be in a city that's walkable. In this country, we have some cities that are walkable, but not great. I mean, like New York, okay. But then you start going around and it's like, okay, well, San Francisco, eh, there are walkable parts, but I wouldn't really call it the most walkable city. Um, you start going around and like, okay, DC has parts and some, some places back east are okay, but they're not great. I want to be someplace, so, yeah. I don't have an idealized ver vision of Paris, but I do like a lot of things about Paris. Just to, uh, walking around the city, it's very beautiful. Um, it's It's got a nice public transit system. The people are a bit of a pain in the ass. Um, not in not when you get to know them, but on the superficial street level interactions. Um, but I like it a lot. I and I want to go someplace. Uh, I'd, I'd really, I don't know. I I wish it was a smaller world so that uh, I wouldn't be so far away from my mom. Is the big thing, and she definitely doesn't want to do cold weather, so that's uh, that limits some places. Uh, but other than that, I just I, I want to get the fuck out of here. I'm kind of tired of being, I'm tired of a lot of things. I'm tired of not getting time off. I'm tired of being in this place, which A, has the noise outside that you hear occasionally, and B, is so dark and so cave-like. I'm tired of, did I mention the vacation thing? Um, I'm tired of working on other people's stupid products that, um, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I was watching... Um, what is his name? The guy who owns the CEO of Rocket Labs. Uh, they just came out with this new rocket. It's not out yet, but they're working on a new rocket called Neutron, uh, which is a fully reusable, other than I guess the upper stage, but pretty much reusable launch vehicle. Um, return to to launch site, kind of reusable. Um, I think it's Peter Beck. Whatever his name is, he's talking about it, and he he was saying that you know like taking working on a rocket takes miserable years off of your life, and I when I was listening to that I was thinking yeah that sucks, but it also at least at the end you have a rocket you know I feel like I've done annoying stupid engineering shit and it's taken miserable years off of my life, and I have no rocket I have nothing really to show for it other than like some little crappy products that other people have made that I'm not proud of and don't really, you know, I mean, they're nice learning experiences for people who work for us, but they're not like satisfying. They don't feel like an accomplishment. They don't feel like they're really useful or valuable to anyone. They're not my thing. They're not, they're not what I want to work on, you know? And it just, it bums me out. I, I really, if I'm, if I'm working hard on stuff, I'd like it to be on stuff that I care about and that's going to help people. And actually that I feel is, you know, moving the ball forward and most of what I've worked on for quite a long time does not feel like that and I understand like most people have worse jobs and all this kind of stuff and I can keep you know but I, I would I would just like it to be better so with that I'd love also to just fucking have my sleep thing fixed because I'm so tired of being tired all the time too um I don't know if you can tell but I'm like it, it, it's this weird thing. I'm so exhausted. And I feel like I could just go to sleep. But if I tried to lay down right now and take a nap, I would just lay down in bed awake for a couple hours and then I'd finally give up. And it's it's just like, you know, like, what the fuck? Um, but with that, on that cheerful note, we'll see. I hope it's a better year next than, than the last. Um, thank you very much, as always, for listening or watching. And uh, Happy New Year. And say Jim.